Support for this Super Soul conversation comes from Audible. Enjoy audiobooks from many of your favorite Super Soul guests like Shonda Rhimes' Year of Yes, Elizabeth Gilbert's Eat, Pray, Love, and the Audible exclusive Promise Me Dad, narrated by former Vice President Joe Biden. And now for a limited time, you can join Audible for just $4.95 per month for your first three months. Offer ends December 31st. Go to audible.com slash supersoul or text supersoul to 500-500 to get started. Supercell Conversations is supported by Squarespace. Already thinking about ways to launch your new business or passion project in the new year? Well, it's time to try Squarespace. Create a totally unique website, and I mean really make it stand out, to showcase your work, blog, or publish content, and even sell products and services in just a few clicks. And there's nothing to install or upgrade ever. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code SUPERSOUL to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I'm Oprah Winfrey. Welcome to Super Soul Conversations, the podcast. I believe that one of the most valuable gifts you can give yourself is time. Taking time to be more fully present. Your journey to become more inspired and connected to the deeper world around us starts right now. Cheryl Strayed's best-selling book, Wild, captivated millions of readers and inspired an Oscar-nominated film. Cheryl's memoir details her harrowing 1,100-mile trek on the Pacific Crest Trail. Her quest to reclaim her shattered life after her mother's death resonated deeply with readers. Four months after Wilde was published, Cheryl released another bestseller called Tiny Beautiful Things. It's a compilation of the popular online advice columns she wrote under the pen name Sugar. Cheryl's willingness to reveal her own struggles in order to help her readers won her a passionate and devoted following. Cheryl's powerful, deeply personal quotes are some of the most shared, tweeted, and memed on social media. Cheryl calls quotes mini instruction manuals for the soul. They are the heart of her latest bestseller, Brave Enough. So it was four years ago we were right here. Yeah. And I remember saying to you, you're going to have enough money to not, because you were like, oh, I just want to have my you own don't, office. <laughs> you don't remember, even know, you remember don't even know how poor I was when I sat with you. I was in huge credit card debt, had student loans, my student loans that I was paying. Yeah. Um, I did not have an office. I had gone shopping the day before because I didn't have anything to wear uh-huh. for the show. Uh-huh. And I didn't have money. So I went to the Goodwill that's by USC and I bought a shirt for $5, which I still have. And I wore it. <laughs> for our first Super Soul yeah. Sunday. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I, I didn't know that that was the state that you were in. Well, this was what was funny. I couldn't talk about it then because I was still in it. Yeah. But my book, yes, my book was on the New York Times bestseller list. Yes. And that month, our rent check bounced. And my husband texted me and said, why did our rent check bounce? And I said, because we don't have any money. (laughs) And he said, nobody would believe this. Yeah, nobody would have. Because our, because you don't get paid as a writer until like a year later. Yep. But this is what's so interesting. I think we were walking right through the trees yeah, we here, were there. and you were saying, "Oh, I just want to be able to. I just want to be able to have my own office." And I said, "Girl, <laughs> you gonna have more than an office." You did say that to yes, me. Yes, I remember that. Yes. And four years later, I have an office. Girl, <laughs> I have an office. You have more than an office. <laughs> I have an office. <laughs> so, can I just talk about this for a moment? Okay, everybody knows when I get excited about a book, I I cannot keep it to myself. I just cannot. Oh. I cannot. And so, I read this book, and I, I read it in like an hour. Right. In, in a it's city. It's a fast read. Yeah, I read it like an hour, and then I thought, okay. Let's see if we can get Cheryl on on Super Soul Sunday to talk about it. And I thought, okay, but right now, what could I do? What could I do? And then I realized I could tweet about it. Oh, I could tweet about the it. The tweet that went around the world. Yeah, I could tweet about it. Because oh. I wanted everybody to get this little book. You can open any page and find something that strikes your heart. And interestingly enough, the world has become, you know, this place of quotes, particularly internet. I mean, it's the most popular thing, people sharing quotes. And this is a series of quotes about being brave enough in the world. So what do you think it is with quotes and why people are so drawn to them? Well, as you know, we're we're hungry for consolation. We're hungry for inspiration and the truth. 
And a, what a quote does is it delivers in a very concise, powerful form that little jolt of that thing you needed to hear, that thing you forgot, the thing you, the, the thing you knew, the thing you didn't quite understand that's mm. now been articulated. And I think, obviously, the Internet is such a great forum for that kind of thing. You know, um, when you and I, you know, before the Internet, you know, we're, when we were just reading books, we would do that thing, right? Yes, Where you yeah. come across a sentence yeah. and you say, wow. Wow. That that I need to remember that, and you underline it or you write it down in your notebook. And I think what's happening now is people are just grabbing that and putting it right on the internet. They're tweeting it, they're putting it on Instagram, making these memes, and they have spread like wildfire. Well, you say that you know this is just in the introduction that I believe in the power of words to help us reset our intentions. Yes, my favorite word, intention. Clarify our thoughts and create a counter narrative to the voice of doubt many of us have have murmuring in our heads. The one that says you can't, you won't, you shouldn't have. Quotes at their core almost always shout, yes! yes! <laughs> <laughs> they do. Yes. Even if it's even if it's a hard quote, even if it's saying a, a truth that's sad, even if it's saying something like there is suffering in the world. Yes. It shouts yes. It's, it, it implies that we can do this. So this book came about why? You know, that's a book that the people made. It's a really um, strange thing that here I've put out this book of quotes, all written by me, but those quotes came into the world, really. Because other people were quoting other people and spreading them around the internet. Exactly. Yeah. And I started to notice this on Twitter and you know yes. Instagram, all the places you see these these quotes. People were giving me my words back to me. People were sending me photographs of tattoos, you know, my lines tattooed on their arm or whatnot. You know, they're what is that like? It's amazing. It's really an honor. Yeah, it is. And an honor. and I, and it makes me feel. I, I understand where they're coming from because, of course, I've felt that same way about mm -hmm. other writers' sentences. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when people take a quote on like that, they're making it their own. You know, I wrote it, but it belongs to them. Yeah. Didn't that kind of happen with Wilde? That obviously you wrote it, and then it sort of became, I mean, I don't know what the stats are on the number of people who are now trying to hike the A trail. lot of people. A lot of people are hiking it, and those who aren't just felt like you were writing that book for, for them. them. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's what literature is about. Yeah. Literature is, is about speaking the deepest truths about who we are as humans. And when readers recognize themselves in a writer's work, you've built this unbreakable bridge yeah. um, between- That is a spiritual connection. That is a spiritual connection. Yeah. And so, you know, I always think, you know, it was it's never up to any writer to say what impact their work has in the world. And I love that, you know, Wild, all those books that came from such a deep place in me, the minute it left my Tiny hands, beautiful things, yeah. it belonged to, to the readers. The readers. And they, and they get to say, make of it what they will. And what so many people made of Wild is it became their personal story. I mean, not only people who decided to go hiking because of Wild, but I would say even more deeply, people who said, I know I have been broken I've been lost, I've been grieving, and I know what you're writing, I know what you're speaking of because I've lived that truth too. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, the hike is then, you know, maybe they, they go on a healing journey and it's a hike, maybe they do something else. Maybe the healing journey was that they read the book and felt that connection. Yeah. During this whole process of writing, did you change the way you were able to express suffering? Because I had read that at one point that you thought that that was like, don't tell that story. Yeah, don't tell that story. Yes. Absolutely. Don't let anybody know. Yeah. And now you feel completely different. Yeah. That in the sharing of the story. Yeah. Well, I would say that that's the less, the, you know, one of the most important lessons I learned through the success of Wild is that it was such an affirmation that if you take that risk, um, if you take that chance, if you tell that the truest, hardest, deepest story you have within you, you're not going to step into the light and find that you're there alone that you're gonna be surrounded by people who are there with you. And say, me and too. Saying, me too. Me too. And when you take that, essentially you're risking vulnerability, you're yes. risking showing yeah. your truest nature. Yes. And you know, here I was writing about the death of my mother. You know, as you know, my mom died of cancer when she was 45. It was the greatest loss of my life. And it was that story that I had to tell over and over again. I've told it in all of my books and there was a point where I felt like, okay, Cheryl, you need to shut up about this. This is, you know, 
-hmm. a lot of people die of cancer. Mm -hmm. quit, quit complaining about it, quit moaning about it. Mm -hmm. But I had something really true to tell about that loss and also what came after that loss, that me finding my way back to life through remembering the love that my mother gave me. And, and I ended up, when I did take that chance of telling that very mm -hmm. specific story, speaking with the universal voice, that's what I found. Because I wasn't just talking about myself, I was talking about all, all of the people. All the people. And people around the world, not just here in the US. That's been astounding to me. I went to India and I was giving this, this reading in this packed room in Jaipur, India, this, this tent at the Jaipur Literary Festival. I've been Hundreds, there. Were I've been you there? there. I've been oh, there. yes, I saw a picture of you. Yeah. Hundreds of people. And I looked out and I thought, I was terrified. And I just thought, I'm going to do what I do. And I finished my talk. And I went and sat at my little table where I was to do my book signing. And those hundreds of people all lined up. And they all said to me all of the same things that people say to me in Ohio and, and Los Angeles. And, and you know, all of them. Yeah. Exactly. The same things. And I, again, you know, we are, the, we are more the same than we are different. More Super Soul coming your way in just a moment. With so many parties and reunions around the holidays, it's important to look and feel your best. And quite honestly, the last thing you want to worry about is ruining that perfect blouse or dress with an ill-fitting bra. So this holiday season, give yourself the gift of third love. With over 15 styles, including strapless and plunge, there's a bra for every holiday party look. Using thousands of real women's measurements and super smoothing memory foam, third love creates bras that are extremely comfortable and make you look and feel great. Third Love also offers sizes from AA through G, as well as their exclusive half cup sizes. And if you're not sure about your size, take their Fit Finder quiz from the comfort of your own home. Because Third Love knows it's a season to spread cheer, they're offering 15% off your first purchase this holiday season. Go to thirdlove.com slash supersoul now to upgrade your holiday style with a perfect fitting Third Love bra and get 15% off your purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash supersoul for 15% off your first Third Love bra thirdlove.com slash supersoul. Do you think that every person has that truth within them to speak, whether they can write it or not? I do. I do. I mean, obviously, you know, the, the work I do is as a writer, but the life I have is as a human. I think that every time you take that, that you find that strength to show your truest self, you know, risk showing th that self that makes you feel a little uncomfortable, a little like you might be, you know, found out to be the weird one after all. Mm -hmm. That almost always when I take that chance, whether it be in small talk or in a book. Well, not it, just risk, be brave enough to break to your brave own heart. Enough. That's right. To be I brave enough to break your own heart, which is your quote. That's my quote. Hello, brave and what enough. that's about is being brave enough to, to risk intimacy, to risk rejection, to risk failure. And all of the best things come when you do that. Because it's about really, when you risk all of those things, you are really daring to be more human. You are. You are. And I think that the le sometimes you learn things the hard way, and you never forget it, do you? And you never, yeah. ever, ever forget and it. And so being brave enough to break your own heart is, is about being brave enough to make the decisions that end up being really right for you. Yeah. And also brave enough to sometimes make a decision that wasn't the best one on the end, but you learn from it. And well, there's no decision on. that you can't learn from. That's right. Yeah. That's right. One of my favorite quotes here, and I've passed it on. I've sent this to people, this quote to a friend of mine who was going through a really horrid divorce process. It take, to take it a long time to get through. People who have suffered any kind of loss. Mm. This is my favorite one. Page 58. You let time pass. Mm. That's the cure. You survive the days. You float like a rabbit ghost through the weeks. You cry and wallow and lament and scratch your way back up through the months. And then one day, you find yourself alone on a bench in the sun, and you close your eyes and lean your head back, and you realize you're OK. Mm. Thank you. Ah, that is, that has really, I know, been like a balm for so many mm. people, so comforting. Thank you. Yes. That's thank you. What I, were you going through when the, when you wrote this? Oh, you know, I've been I've been in 
that moment of my life so many different times. You know, I think that part, to me that quote is about, is about how part of life is suffering. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, so many of us, I think it's really interesting that you sent that quote to friends yes. who were in need. Yeah. Because I think when we see our friends suffering, we don't know what to say. You don't know right? what to say. You say, and you know what I'm so great sorry. About it? You know what's great about this, what, what, about this book of quotes? No matter what somebody's going through, there's a quote in here for it. <laughs> for them. And, yeah. And this is, you know what? I actually cried when I first read it because a friend of mine's really been going through a lot. And I thought, this is what I've been trying to say. Right. This the, is what the, I've been trying to say. You're not saying your pain isn't real. Yeah. You're saying, this you know what? This is what I've been trying Here's to say. Here's what you do. Yeah. You know, you let time pass and you cry and you, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. go through the hardship. And then you're going to come out the other side and the sun will be shining on your face. Oh. And you'll be sitting there for on a bench. It. It's and like, realize... it's connected to that. Yeah. It's connected to the quote in the book that actually is by my mother put yourself in the way of beauty. Yeah. That you just hold on through the hard times. And know that someday you will be sitting on that bench yeah. and you're leaning your head back. Is that and your favorite a, one? Put yourself in the way of beauty. Put yourself in the way. It might be my favorite one simply because it comes from my mom. And mm -hmm. it has been such a guiding light for me in my life. Because in the hardest times, um, I don't know if you remember the story, is that my mother would say, no matter what the hard times are, yeah. hard times will come. But you know what else will always come? Is a sunrise and a sunset. And so it's up to you. You want to be there for it? Be there for it. I think it's that's about perspective and gratitude, and those two things are so key to I think a happy life. Yes, I love this one too. Don't surrender. Oh, this is so. Oh my goodness. Hello. Don't surrender all your joy for an idea you used to have about yourself that isn't true anymore. Mm. Where did that one come from? Well, how long do we, you know? Hold how on. many times, how long do we hold on <laughs> Holding to on. this old idea? Mm -hmm. I was going to do this job, or I was going to go to this school, or I was going to be married to yeah. this person, yeah. and it doesn't serve us anymore. And you know where that came from is I was asked uh, to write a letter to my 20-something self in my book, Tiny Beautiful Things. Yes. And that's one of the things I told my younger self, is that, that, that it was okay to rewrite my story from time to time. And not only okay, but necessary. And that you can't, you know, there's one thing about hold, you know, sometimes you do have to see th things through even though they don't cause you joy. But sometimes you need to say, you know what? I'm not gonna surrender my joy. Yeah. I'm not gonna be this thing anymore. I'm gonna yeah. be this other thing, that's, this other way. That's such a more eloquent, beautiful, poetic way of saying stop holding on to the past. That's right. Yes. Yeah. But so many people are living right now based upon what they thought or what they wanted or what they right. imagined. And it's, and and that it's no longer true. Not true. That story's no longer true. Yeah. How do you wake up and realize the story isn't true? I think it's not about waking up one morning, though it, that, though it does sometimes feel that way. I think that you, you know, being awake to our lives is in some ways a daily process, you know, checking in with this idea of like, why, what is my intention? You said intention is your favorite word. Mm -hmm. And I remember at some point recently, us, the two of us talking, and you, 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 you had counseled me. You said, Cheryl, always ask yourself, what is your intention? Mm -hmm. And I think that being awake um, to those stories you tell yourself about yourself mm -hmm. um, is about reminding yourself always what is your intention. Yeah. Have other people changed towards you since all of this happened? Most people haven't. I, you know, the, the, the people who really loved me, mm -hmm. loved me before. You know, for a long time after I had this experience with Wild, I would, I would say, oh no, nothing has changed in my life. And, and that was my way in some ways. I was- uh, Of trying to say, trying to I haven't humble. changed, yeah, yeah. Trying of trying to be, to be humble. humble. Yeah. And now I say, you know, two things changed. It was money and I lost my anonymity to some extent, mm -hmm. you know? I had to decide to just remember who I was, to really emphasize the people who I have in my life, who don't care if I wrote wild or not, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and just to trust that kind of, the grounded sense of who I really am in the world, mm -hmm. um, rather than who people think I am as a writer. Mm -hmm. And how is the family adjusted to it all? My family, well, you know, as you know, my, my children Bobby. got to, Carver yeah. and Bobby, the experiences they've had, 
meeting you, meeting Reese Witherspoon, Laura Dern, becoming friends with, with people who like I would have never dreamed in my childhood or you in your childhood meeting. You know, that's been, I think, a fun ride for them. Um, so there is that, that piece of this that's been, you know, really fun for our family. But mostly they're just, we're just like we always were. Our conversation will continue after a short break. Support for this Super Soul Conversation comes from ZipRecruiter. Ever wonder what happens to that job application after clicking Submit? Will it ever see the light of day? ZipRecruiter understands how frustrating it can be to apply for a job and never hear back. And that if you've taken the time to apply for a job, you deserve to know where you stand every step of the way. When you apply for a job on ZipRecruiter, you can choose to get status updates. These alerts will let you know when your application has been received and when a real live person has actually viewed it. And if you don't get the job, you'll know when it closes so you can move forward to the next opportunity. Knowing where you stand keeps you in control of your job search. That's what makes ZipRecruiter the smartest way to get hired. To find a job you love today, download the top-rated ZipRecruiter job search app on iPhone or Android. Or get started at ZipRecruiter.com slash SuperSoul. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash SuperSoul. Once again, head to ZipRecruiter.com slash SuperSoul. Cheryl met her husband, Brian, nine days after completing her trek on the Pacific Crest Trail. They got married in 1999 and are raising their two children. Their son, Carver, now 11, and 10-year-old daughter, Bobby, not far from where Cheryl completed her life-changing hike. Would you mind sharing the story about Bobby and Carver oh, wanting I to will. fly? Uh, yeah, okay. I'll tell that story. Okay. Every summer, uh, for the last couple summers, I've taught a writing workshop in Chamonix, France. And we went almost three years ago. And Carver and Bobby were, at the time, eight and nine. And we arrive in Chamonix in the French Alps. And so you, it's this little village with these high, snowy peaks. And in the summertime, the sky is full of uh, paragliders. They called them parapentes in French. And my kids, even though they were eight and nine, immediately said, Mom, we're going to do that. And I said, no, you are absolutely not going to do that. They keep at us all week. We want to go. We want to go. Finally, I say to them, you know, you can't go. You're too young. And so, of course, my daughter marches over to the fellow who's like selling the parapente rides. And he says, oh, eight. Eight. You just have to be eight. Wow. So I say to my kids, you know, um, no, I'm afraid. I can't. I can't let you do this. Yeah. And I said, also, you're, you're too afraid to do it. But you think you want to do it, but you're going to get up there to that mountaintop, and you have to, you know, you have to jump off of it, and you're not, you're not going to be brave enough to do it. And my son looks at me. He was nine. And he says, Mom, you know what? I am afraid. But I don't want to be a person who lives my life not doing things just because they scare me. Oh, Garver. <laughs> Your nine-year-old nine nine. Carver says... Nine-year-old Carver yeah. says this to mm -hmm. me. And it was one of those moments of awakening where I just thought, you know, here, here is where I had to be brave enough to break my own heart as a mother. Yeah. He knew he had me. Yeah, I was going to say... Because I was like, oh, my gosh. And my husband and I just looked at each other. And we said, okay, okay, we will do this. And we paid them two tickets. And the next morning, okay, we bundled them up in these, like, wind jackets. I'm not joking, Oprah. This was terrifying. So we send them up. I say to the Frenchman, will you please make sure that all of the buckles are done? <laughs> you know, and he says, I will make sure, madame, you know. And so we go and stand in a meadow in the town where they are to land. And 30 minutes later, they start to get close enough that they can see us and they're yelling, mom, dad, mom, dad. And they land in the grass and they're alive. And they have this amazing, like each of them, they're, the looks on their faces. There's no inventing that look. It's one of the most authentic looks of achievement and success and pride and joy. And you know that, that and feeling. And I did it. Uh, that it's, feeling you, you, you it's did yes something hard. It's yes coming from the inside out. It's yes. Yeah. It's shouting yes, yes from the deepest place in your soul and your spirit. And it's, and, it's, and it's doing something that was hard to do that you did anyway. You know, that's bravery. That's bravery. That's courage. But brave enough to break your own heart. Are you standing on the ground for those 30 minutes? It's actually longer than 30 minutes because there's 30 yeah, minutes to that's get right. up and then waiting for them to jump off. Yeah, and, almost an hour. And are you thinking, what am I nuts? Am I crazy? Something, you're, you're, you're imagining every possible yeah. 
well, terrible that's scenario. Right. And yeah. this is always the one of the hardest things about life, right? As a parent, you're always making will decisions. Would I forgive myself? If they would I themselves? forgive yeah. myself? And, and you know, the answer is no. And yet, what are you going to do? You're going to what are you going to live your life not letting your kids do anything that scares you? Mm -hmm. If you interviewed Carver and Bobby right now and said, "Tell me the the one of the greatest things you've ever done," I think they would both tell you that. Yeah. And you know, I think that this is one of the threads that runs through Brave Enough is this idea of of how we have to take responsibility for our lives and make hard choices, but also how people help us along the way. And you know, I paid for that ticket to get them to the top of the mountain, but they're the ones who had to jump off. And the deal with jumping off a mountain is you have to do it yourself. It's the same deal with climbing up to the top, it turns out. But you know, I think that, that in so many ways, like my children showed me, they taught me a lesson that I taught them that I needed to again learn for myself which is a really fascinating part of life, isn't it? The way you learn from the same things over and over again Absolutely. in a new light. Yeah. Can you finish this? I feel the presence of God when? When I'm in natural, beautiful, wild places. I experience love when? Mm. I breathe. Mm. The purpose of forgiveness is? To move forward, to have, to have a whole life. Mm. And I'm living my purpose when? I'm loving and giving and writing. Mm. And you believe the purpose of a soul is? I think of my soul as my center, the repository of the deepest truths, the thing that has guided me since the moment I was born and will guide me mm -hmm. to my death. Do you have a hope for your legacy? Yes, I hope that people find solace in the words that I've left them, whether it be in my writing, in my books, or in the conversations we've had together. What do you think is the biggest obstacle to peace? The biggest obstacle to peace? I think it's scarcity. Mm. The idea that we don't live in an abundant world I think people get really afraid when they think something's been taken from them. Mm. You think that's the same thing as the force of rage because, you know, events in the news yeah. over and over and again, we see the violence and we see the rage. What do you think the source of rage is, the same thing? I think it is that scarcity. I think that people feel very afraid when they, they feel threatened that their power has been taken away mm -hmm. or that other groups of people have been granted some sort of power or access that they don't have, and that becomes rage and violence. And the root of racism is? Oh, God. So deep. Mm. I think the root of racism is in this false notion of the other, us and them, mm -hmm. that kind of divide that that maybe we're not born with, but that we're taught so early on. Yeah. Again, it's interesting, it's connected to scarcity. It's like we are this tribe and they are that tribe and these people are this and this is, and that, that, that idea that we have to hold power instead of share love. Mm -hmm. That's really good, Cheryl. And so who've been your greatest teachers? My mother, my father, mm -hmm. not, in, not a positive teacher, but he taught me things about the world and humanity that are actually negative. But I do think that that has, you know, uh, learning about some of the difficult things has been useful to me in my life. Um, my kids have taught me a lot, my husband, and people who guided me on my path as a writer. And real success is? Knowing that you did the best work you can possibly do. There's, that's the only measure that matters to me. If I can say, yes, I gave it my all. Yes, I did my best. That's success. Yeah. This is perfect for you because you already wrote about it. What advice would you give your younger self? The thing that I really wish I could travel back in time and tell myself, and I think I'm not alone in this, is just to say to my younger self, you are okay. You're doing good. Just keep doing it, and you're going to learn. You're going to not relax. You know, just relax. And don't, and don't worry so much about, you know, finding the answers and finding love and finding, you know, success. Just do your work. 
live your life, be kind, be good, pay your own electric bill. <laughs> it's going to turn out okay. <laughs> yes. If you do that, have integrity. Trust your integrity. Don't trust, you know, what somebody else thinks that you should be doing with your life. Trust your own integrity. T trust your gut. Yeah. Which that is, you know what? I ended up doing that, and it ended up working out, didn't it? It always does. <laughs> well, I am so inspired by this book. I would have to say, listen, I think everybody should have this little book by their nightstand. <laughs> I think graduations are coming up. I'm giving it for graduations. Oh, thank you. I give it for birthdays. I give it, I'm, I'm thinking it's perfect for Mother's Day. That's right. It's, I, I, it, it's just the book for all times. It's a oh. book for all seasons. Thank you. I'm so touched. You inspire me, Oprah. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you for saying that. And thank you for inspiring us. <laughs> thank you for saying I love it. Love thank it. you. I'm Oprah Winfrey, and you've been listening to Super Soul Conversations, the podcast. You can follow Super Soul on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. If you haven't yet, go to Apple Podcasts and subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. Join me next week for another Super Soul Conversation. Thank you for listening. In order to best align our content and our advertisers with your interests, we'd like to learn a little more about you. So please go to podsurvey.com slash supersoul and take a quick anonymous survey. Once you've completed the survey, you can enter to win a $100 Amazon gift card. Again, that's podsurvey.com slash S-U-P-E-R-S-O-U-L. Thanks for your help.